Hello there, Stephen Reed here, and as promised, this is the second narration of Nicholas Reed's second short story, which became the movie The Fear Inside. And as I started it, we thought it was appropriate that I should narrate it. So, without further ado, here we go with The Fear Inside. In a dark, misty street, everything was quiet until two young men, brothers, both possibly drunk, came walking down the street. The two men were talking about something they had done earlier that evening. I liked the beer, one of them said to the other. It was good, the other replied. I want some more, the first drunken youngster said. Out of the blue, one of the drunken youngsters starts to wander. He starts to wander the other way by accident, while the other says, with his back to him, Come on, man, it's time to go home. Suddenly, the youngsters, who appeared to be making his way back to the bar the two gentlemen were talking about, were suddenly grabbed by a large, dark figure. It happened so fast, so quick, that you could hardly see it, and only a breath exhaled a man was heard before he disappeared into the darkness. The other guy turned around to encourage his friend to come home. When the man turned around, he saw his friend had disappeared. Confused, drunk and tired, he exclaimed, Hey, where have you gone? The man continued while slowly walking back, looking for his friend. Come on, man, this isn't funny, the man said with a concerned voice. The drunken man suddenly stumbled to the floor. As he had tripped over something, before he could get his bearings, suddenly something grabbed his foot. The man was desperately clinging onto the curb to avoid getting dragged away. But whatever on earth was grabbing him, the youngster screamed out loud, Please, somebody help me! He couldn't hold on much longer, and eventually was dragged away into the darkness by the unknown creature, as the man screamed as he disappeared into the darkness. A week later, in a house along the same street, the youngster's parents had become very concerned. Their two sons had been missing for a whole week and they didn't know what to do. They had called for the police and soon the law arrived to talk to the parents. They had little answers to say to the concerned parents. We have had no luck finding our sons, the policeman said to the worried mother. But they couldn't have just disappeared, the anxious mother moaned. As the mother grew more worried, the father just sat in his chair completely silent, as if there was no one there. We are trying our best to locate them, but there is always a chance that they want to remain lost. The policeman responded to the worried mother. The mother showed the policeman out and started crying by the door. The father was still just sitting in his seat, totally ignoring the world. Later that same night, the father took a walk down the street, around about the same place as the youngsters had when they had disappeared. When the father saw blood on the floor by the curb of the road, he knelt down to take a closer look at the blood. While the father was investigating, a sudden howling shriek sounded from behind him. The father started running back to his home, but something started pursuing him. The father was too afraid to look back at what was pursuing him. The father got to his front door and quickly pulled his keys out. The something that was chasing him had almost caught up with him. He opened the door, dashing in and shut the door behind him, just in the nick of time. But something smashed into the closed door with an almighty crash. 
the father fell to the floor in shock as the door was smashed down on top of him and the father passed out. Being knocked on the head by the door as it had some down and a feminine scream heard as the father passed out completely. The father woke up and slowly got off the floor. He realised that the door was slightly ajar. In panic, he started to shout out his wife's name. The father looked all around the house for his wife, but there was no sign of her. He ran back down the stairs and suddenly noticed a note by the phone written in blood and in a different language but for some reason he understood what it said I will have your blood to complete my collection he read in terror the father started packing some clothes into a small case and quickly as he could he left the house the father left his neighborhood knowing that he could never return and that the thing the creature was always close behind him the end further to this we decided to make an alternative ending just for fun so I added a little alternate ending which goes as follows the father woke up slowly got off the floor he realized that the door was slightly ajar in panic he started to shout out his wife's name the father looked all around the house for his wife but there was no sign of her he ran back down the stairs and looked at the phone for a while thinking he would phone the police again when suddenly the father had an epiphany and he realized something which he said out loud ah finally some peace and quiet the father sat back down in his favorite chair in front of the television with a large mug of coffee and a six pack of lagers to the side of him and waited for the football to start just what I've always wished for he sighed as he sipped his coffee with an evil grin on his face the end well I hope you enjoyed our short story and I hope you enjoyed comparing the original short story to how it came across in the short movie and see what changes were made and what changes were made to the character also to point out that there became a third ending which actually fitted in to the object universe we made this movie originally 16 years ago and it's very nostalgic to me and I've enjoyed immensely going back over it and seeing comparing the original story to how it now looks and in fact we have very varied versions because we have two or three different soundtracks to it as well um, we'll come back further on this and I want to say that it's lovely that you're still here after our 27th anniversary and we will still keep going as long as we can bye bye for now